Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon to vote in the poll for your favorite lady badass, and like and subscribe for bigger swords next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Ichigo from Bleach, or the anime version of Danny Phantom, even though Bleach predates Danny Phantom by about three years, and post-dated it by like 15. And Ichigo has a big sword. You know what? Let's just forget this and clarify that I did not criticize the creator of Danny Phantom. <laughs> Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need to get spiritual, like literal spirits, not crystals your aunt buys on Facebook. Next, let's get a Zanbato, a magical weapon that we can use to reap souls and poke holes in souls. Finally, we'll get empty inside with a hollow version and some enhanced spiritual power. For stats, we'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, but watch your strength and charisma. You'll need them to multi-class later. Strength will be number one. Your Zanbato is as big as a Zanbato truck. Charisma next. You shout a lot, but people still like you, and the whole adventure started with a strong persuasion check. Constitution after that, I guess technically you die a lot, but then you undie also a lot. Basically, you never stay dead, it should be high. Follow that up with dexterity, I really wish this could be higher, you've got martial arts skills, but D&D is an anime. I guess you probably couldn't get martial arts anyway, since Ichigo's wisdom shouldn't be very high, he's kind of a reckless kid. We'll dump intelligence, you're dumb, in that special protagonist way where you know nothing in the lore, so characters get to explain it to you, which is great for the audience. For your race, we need a transformation later, which means we need to Asimar now, specifically Fallen Asimar, because your transformation is kinda spooky. This will give you plus one strength and plus two charisma, 60 feet of dark vision, the light cantrip for friends who don't have dark vision, celestial resistance for resistance to necrotic and radiant damage, and healing hands to restore an amount of HP to creatures equal to your total level as an action once per long rest. It doesn't have to be healing healing, hit points aren't meat points. Points. I might just use it to explain your relentless tenacity if you use it on yourself. Build your own background for acrobatics and perception skills. We can't get them from either of the classes we're going to be signing up for. The first class is going to be Paladin, and Athletics and Intimidation are the soldier skills. Soul Reapers are pretty soldiery, so hey, cool, that works. Divine Sense lets you sense fiends, celestials, and undead within 60 feet of you an amount of times per day equal to your charisma modifier. I think Hollow would be undead because of how they used to be alive, and now they aren't, and also now are. They're literally undead. It's finally one for one with this ability. For abilities that aren't one for one, Lay on Hands gives you a pool of healing equal to five times your paladin level. We reflavored healing in the background section. We can do it again here. Repeating things is pretty on brand for Bleach. Before the break, we just got done with the first level of paladin, where we got athletics and intimidation skill, as well as the divine sense ability and healing hands. But second level paladins get a fighting style. Great weapon fighting lets you reroll ones and twos on damage die with a two handed weapon like a greatsword deals 2d6 slashing damage. Double the die means double the chances to roll low, or in your case, high now. You can also learn spells like Heroism, which gives a creature immunity to being frightened and temporary HP equal to your charisma modifier at the start of their turns. You could use it on yourself. Ichigo really adapts to the whole ghosts are real and one is trying to kill you right now concept pretty quickly. It lasts for a minute depending on your concentration. If you'd rather hit harder because you're not scared, you're just pissed off. Divine Favor adds a d4 of radiant damage to your weapon attacks for a minute. Lots of ghosts resist physical, so this could be very helpful. We'll get something even better in a second, but if you really want to add radiant damage, cast my favorite paladin spell, Divine Smite, which isn't actually a spell. It just uses spell slots to add 2d8 radiant damage to your weapon attacks and an extra d8 to fiends or undead. Hollows obviously count as undead because they used to be alive and now they are not. Sorry, that's sort of repetitive with something I said earlier, but repeating things is very on brand for Bleach. Third level paladins get divine health, making your character immune to disease, but that doesn't make you the player immune to disease or your fellow players, so wear a mask and play online. You can also choose a sacred oath, and the Oath of the Watchers feels pretty on brand with soul reaping. It's from an unearthed arcana. If your DM isn't cool with that, Oath of Devotion or Vengeance would work fine. Watchers specifically focus on protecting the world from extra planar and interdimensional threats. That gets easier with Watcher's Will, giving an amount of creatures equal to your charisma modifier, advantage on intelligence, wisdom, and charisma saving throws for a minute. This is one of your options for a channel of divinity, the other is Abjure the Extra Planar, letting you yell at elemental 
elementals fey fiends and aberrations forcing them to make a wisdom saving throw failing that they have to use their action to dash away i know that i said hollows are undead but some of them could be fiends i'm randomly changing a part of the lore without warning to be on theme if you want to be hollow ichigo good news as a fallen asimar you get necrotic shroud letting you force a charisma saving throw on creatures within 10 feet of you frightening them if they fail and you get to add your level of necrotic damage to your first attack every round for a minute get spooky and out ghost the ghosts fourth level paladins get an ability score improvement or a feat let's grab some more strength to hit harder with the zanbat toe we don't actually have yet sorry about that technically speaking the other class we're dipping into soon should go first but mechanically the first thing you do is fight stuff so i wanted to get the fighting stuff earlier fifth level paladins get an extra attack letting you attack twice instead of once with your action and hey that's why we took paladin first if you want to be real ichigo start with the warlock i know thirsting blade is also extra attack but if we're going to get extra attack here anyway and they don't stack we might as well get the extra invocation you also get second level spells like aid giving three creatures of your choice five extra hp for eight hours and it's not temporary hp it's just the real good stuff buff up chad rukia and chad i know i said chad twice he's my favorite now let's bounce over to warlock because we probably should have started here we'll be in an undying pact because you started reaping when you didn't die isn't that nice undying warlocks are among the dead giving you the spare the dying cantrip for free to automatically stabilize creatures at zero hp and you basically get sanctuary with undead creatures they have to make a wisdom saving throw before attacking you or casting a spell at you failing that they either have to find another target or waste their attack this would be more useful if the undead didn't become immune to these effects after you hit them with an attack because you know ichigo's gonna attack them if you want to attack them with a blade beam eldritch blast is a ranged spell attack that deals 1d10 force damage and since you're higher than fifth level its cantrip power is scaled up letting you shoot two beams instead of one your sword beam tends to be horizontal so this should help you hit multiple people with it today's true strike is brought to you by i don't know i guess i said wear a mask earlier in this episode so i'm sure people are going to be salty about that wear a mask other countries took this more seriously and they're basically wrapping it up now true strike gives you advantage on a weapon on attack next turn it's bad just attack twice for this level spell false life is exclusive to the undying list and it gives you 1d4 plus 4 temporary hp for your ghostly self protection from evil and good gives a creature you touch protection from aberrations celestials elementals fiends fey and undead meaning that their enemies have disadvantage trying to attack them and can't possess charm or frighten them more anime stuff everyone is just bad at fighting you because you got protagonist powers we're multi-classing spell casters but it's actually easier with warlock to determine how many slots you have at any given level basically just pretend you didn't multi-class and you have warlock slots and paladin slots separately then combine the list and cast spells from one with the other and vice versa it's pretty nice second level warlocks get invocations which are special mini feats that only warlocks get and yeah i guess there's unearthed arcana that lets you take a feat for one but that's like saying eldritch blast is a bard spell because bards have magical secrets anyway armor of shadows lets you cast mage armor on yourself at will making your ac 13 plus your dexterity modifier which is pretty much the best light armor you can have without being a monk and you're not better at absorbing hits because of your clothes it's because of your spiritual power agonizing blast lets you add your charisma modifier to the damage of your eldritch blast attack effectively making them as powerful as a heavy crossbow in terms of damage per round it's a really strong cantrip for this level spell expeditious retreat lets you dash as a bonus action for up to 10 minutes depending on your concentration doesn't actually have to be a retreat it could be called expeditious charge to let you dash in and mess people up third level warlocks get a gift from their patron and zangetsu would love you to have a fancier sword pack of the blade lets you conjure a weapon as an action and now it's a magical weapon in terms of overcoming resistances so you'll be able to carve up them hollows for this level spell shadow blade summons a weapon that's finesse light and can be thrown that deals 2d eight psychic damage it's maybe a little bit small for your zanbak toe but it can do some serious damage it's worth considering fourth level warlocks get another ability score improvement letting you cap off your strength so we can get a big old feat next time no spoilers it's the same one we always take when we have a giant sword knock was added to the warlock list in the class feature variants on earth arcana take a shot which breaks a lock and makes a loud noise your sword is big enough to break locks and that would make a loud noise fifth level warlocks get another invocation improved packed weapon lets you add one to your attack and damage rolls with your packed weapon for more accurate and deadly slashes for this level spell counter spell shuts down spells with a reaction if they are third level or lower automatically you can shut down higher level spells with a charisma check of 10 plus the spells level the formula for a bleach episode is ichigo find bad guy bad guy has never been beaten ichigo decides to be better than them and ichigo wins this is step three of that formula sixth level undying warlocks get 
get to defy death, letting you heal 1d8 plus your constitution modifier when you pass a death saving throw, or keep someone alive with spare the dying. Zangatsu just keeps throwing you back into the fight, I kind of get the vibe he just doesn't want to hang out with you. For this old spell, Speak with the Dead lets you speak with the dead, and ask a dead person up to five questions. It's not really how Death Sight works in Bleach, but the best way to do that would be to go for nine levels of one of the new rogue unearthed arcanas, and nine levels of rogue doesn't really work for Ichigo, his sword is definitely not finesse. But if you want to get mad in the comments, the algorithm thanks you. 7th level warlocks learn 4th level spells, banishment forces a charisma saving throw on a creature, failing that they get sent back to their home plane, or just get sent to a demi plane for up to a minute depending on your concentration. If it lasts for the full duration, they stay on their home plane, but only if they're not from around here. Hopefully you enjoy busting ghosts, it's supposed to make you feel good. You get another invocation here, Eldritch Smite lets you add force damage equal to 1d8 per spell level, so 5d8 force damage with a warlock slot, and you knock the enemy prone if they're huge or smaller. You can also pair this with divine smites as well if you really want to get rid of your spell slots and hit hard but mostly get rid of those spell slots eighth level warlocks get an ability score improvement or a feat the great weapon master feat lets you take a negative five penalty to your attack roll with a two-handed weapon to add 10 to the damage roll no limit to how many times per round you can do this meaning that your first attack in the round deals 29 damage just with modifiers you can also make an attack as a bonus action after you land a critical hit or reduce a creature to zero hp which you can also add bonus damage too. For this level spell, Death Ward is from the Undying list and it's probably the most on-brand spell for a subclass called Undying. It protects a creature from hitting 0 HP the first time they would in the next 8 hours, with them hitting 1 HP instead. Pairing this with the Defy Death ability and you're going to be very hard to kill. Ninth level warlocks can learn another invocation. Otherworldly Leap lets you cast the jump spell at will, tripling your jump distance effectively and letting you make an anime jump whenever you need to. For this level spell, Far Step gives you the anime disappear and then reappear technique, letting you teleport 60 feet as a bonus action for up to a minute depending on your concentration. It sort of erases the usefulness of the jump spell until you realize that you only have two spell slots per short rest and you already probably use them to hit harder. 10th of all undying warlocks get undying nature, meaning that you don't have to breathe, eat, drink, or sleep, and age at a tenth of the general time it would take you to age. Mechanically, this isn't very strong, but for flavor, it's pretty accurate to how the show works, so that's why we took it. If you want to ditch this level in your home game, go ahead, I won't arrest you or anything. For this level spell, fly gives a creature you choose a flying speed of 60 feet per round. Actually, at this point, you're casting it at 5th level, so it's 3. Everyone can just fly now, I guess that's part of the build. Back over to Paladin, 6th level paladins get anime powers like Aura of Protection, giving allies within 10 feet of you a bonus to their saving throws equal to your Charisma modifier, and since you're always within 10 feet of yourself, that means that you'll be really good at passing saving throws with no more negative modifiers. 7th level watcher paladins get Aura of the Sentinel, letting you add your Charisma modifier to the initiative of creatures within 10 feet of you, again including you. Considering Ichigo is so angry people are going to be mad he's not a barbarian, I'd say it's fair to say he's itching for a fight. One could even say he's Ichi going for a fight, but one shouldn't. One should realize that's not a good joke and should edit it out before they record the voiceover. One did not do that. 8th level paladins get another ability score improvement. Let's get that charisma modifier up since we're actually using it for stuff now. 9th level paladins can learn 3rd level spells like Dispel Magic, which is pretty much the exact same thing as Counterspell, but with an action instead of a reaction. So when someone is like, I'm magical, I've never been hit and can't die or whatever, you can be like, ah, no, and then hit them with your big sword. Our capstone is the 10th level of paladin for Aura of Courage, making all of your friends immune to fear within 10 feet of you at least. How could you be afraid when you've got an anime protagonist on your team? Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, you can open up your spiritual energy to break the spirits of your enemies with 4d6 plus 13d8 plus 52 damage in a single round of three different types to really break people down with middling rolls that's 116 damage you're also really hard to kill with your lowest saving throw being a plus two and several methods to just say no to death Finally, you got plenty of mobility options with flight, teleportation, and jumping skills to get around. For weaknesses, you're dealing with the arcane and you're dumb. Low intelligence can set you up for some nasty saving throws, but also probably just makes you bad at hunting ghosts, which is your job. You're also lacking AC if you're rocking the mage armor. 14 is bad. You've got the strength for plate, but playing the character and keeping it light could be an issue. Finally, your spell slots are going to be disappearing really quickly. With smites every round, if you want to deal the most damage you can, which 
generally you do. But that should end the fight pretty quickly. Unleash all of your spiritual energy and wrap the whole thing up in a tight 22 minutes. Just don't be afraid to take some advice from more experienced soul reapers, otherwise you might be the ghost instead of the buster. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We make two videos every week. We've got plenty of anime boys, but what about the ladies? Join the Patreon to vote for Nezuko from Demon Slayer, Raftalia from Shield Hero, or Blake from Ruby. I know Ruby is an anime, it's just a weird thing to put on themed polls. Sub to Tulak and Mango as well. Bye.